straighten up. Amen. You know, you got some folk want to get in folk business so they can spread it. Amen. So if you ought to have some folk who get in folk, folk business so they can try to make it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish I had to witness it. Amen. And when you find out that some people's house ain't clean, instead of talking about their dirty house, baby, you ought to get your mind to your bucket and you know, go over that. Understand how can I make the world a better place? Yeah. Don't just fake it, but be faithful. Amen. Yes. Yeah. 
this church in Pergamos, uh, most modern translation, the NIV emerged from the last kind of epic Pergamos. Who did that epic phone call? How far are you down to the coach that Pergamos is the feminine pronunciation. Pergamum is the neuter. Right. It was the capital of the Roman Asia. It was called the greatest city of Asia Minor. It um, was smaller than Ephesus and Smyrna, and yet it was considered to be greater. Uh, it had first temple dedicated to Caesar was built right there in Pergamon. He was an overzealous promoter of the imperial cult. They believed in worshiping their, their idols. Had a whole bunch of temples built to One uh, was dedicated to Zeus. Uh, another was dedicated to Ancopolis, uh, that was the god of hearing. Uh, Athea, Lycophilo, Lycophonite. I'll look up on the image, I can't pronounce all this stuff. They were real believers in temples to their gods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zeus, you know, was considered the strongest god. He was considered the god over the gods. They had all of this idol worship there in Pergamos. This, this city was considered the custodian of the Greek way of life. Trying to get you to see the environment they were in. Now don't confuse Pergamos with the church at Pergamos. This is the environment they had to worship in. This is the city that they were surrounded by. And they have a lot of similarities with that city in Smyrna. Smyrna was one of the two cities on the list that had no criticism. The Christ couldn't find anything wrong with them. And the similarities between the two churches are almost identical, and yet he found something wrong with the church at Pergamos. Hmm. But now don't get confused, because he found something wrong and doesn't negate what they were doing right. Amen. I was sharing with the group Wednesday night, and I felt kind of bad when I finished Sunday. Because with all of that positivity, there was no criticism Christ gave that church. And yet, seemingly, that my sermon was kind of hard. It, it talked about uh, conformity. It talked about people who messed up. And then when you did right, you were persecuted and punished. It, it's almost like I didn't have a climax. How do you climax persecution? Hmm. How do you climax punishment? Hmm. To say that Jesus was pleased, that sounds good, but that really don't do that. Don't make y'all shout. Hmm. How you know that because y'all didn't shout that at me? <laughs> no, no, you can talk about it. It sounds good. And you want to pat yourself on the back, but it, it takes a step higher than that. That, that pleasing God has its rewards. But you got to be a, a special, spiritual, mature saint to really get your cookies off of pleasing God. Oh, I'm saying, man, I know you're right. Pleasing God is all right, but y'all really have some money. <laughs> Pleasing God is all right, but I'd rather have a pretty car. Pleasing God is all right, but I prefer having a nice house. Pleasing God is all right, but I'd like to be popular. I'd like to have a lot of people 
lacking me. Hmm. But what about being satisfied just knowing that God yeah. is pleased? Yeah. Thank you. 
participate in them out of greed. They claim they love the Lord, but they really love the dollar more than anything else. They, not really, they just fake. You got folk, not just, just, just white racists, they got some black colored folk in church like that, you know. <laughs> Pretend they're all in a bottle of chip with the real mouth. The truth of the matter is, they're not really faithful, they are faking. Everybody that show up ain't faithful. Because everybody don't show up for the right reason. Some people come just to see what they can mess up. Instead of seeing what they can straighten up. You know, you got some folk want to get in folk business so they can spread. So we ought to have some folk who get in folk folk business so they can try to make it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, I wish I had to witness it. Then when you find out that some people's house ain't clean, instead of talking about their dirty house, they we ought to get you a mop and a bucket and a tree and go over there. Oh, I feel like preaching today. We ought to go over there and have you a clean up part. Yeah? Instead of talking about what's wrong, you ought to figure out how can say, I get you. Say, yeah. say, say. Yeah. They close stand when they come to church. You ought to bring them to your house and wash some clothes. Say. Give them some new clothes and just make things be a whole lot better. I need to understand how can I make the world a better place. Yeah. Wow. Don't just fake it, but be faithful. Yeah. If I'm faithful, it makes a difference in everybody's life. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Yeah, I told you that's one subject that me and that crazy man agreed on about fake news. That yeah. Most of this stuff here is not real, it's yeah. fake. Right. But we, we need some real people. We, we need some folk who are going to live by the truth, who wake up by the truth. Satan, uh, he said, he told Jesus, I'm walking like a roaring lion, seeking whom I may divide. Yeah, so they yeah. can divide the two of that. That here we got the church that can deal with the roaring lion. They conquer the roaring lion. They, they were willing to die for Jesus Christ. They were willing to stand up for right and righteousness. Yeah, that's what made y'all quiet last week. See, when you start talking about being willing to die, you don't have a whole lot of modern folk want to talk about that kind of stuff. He said, I agree with this man Antipas. He's one of my faithful martyrs that he gave up his life for the cause. All, all he had to do was say Caesar is Lord, but he, he couldn't do it. He denied that Caesar is Lord because he believed strongly that Jesus is Lord. All I want to know is Jesus the Lord of your life. How, how strongly do you feel about Jesus? Satan talking about he's a roaring lion doesn't bother them. They were ready to stand up to the roaring lion. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A strong stance versus uh, persecution and suffering. But, but then when we move down to the next point, we see that Satan is not just a roaring lion. Mm -hmm. Satan is also a sneaky serpent. Mm -hmm. oh, we got quiet there. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a sneaky snake. He, 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 he identifies himself in Genesis as a snake. He, yeah, yeah. He doesn't always come to you like he really is. He knows how to be slimy and slippery and sliding. He, he knows how to appear one way when he's really appearing another way. The serpent, uh, Satan, was moving and this move was more successful than the roaring lion. See, Satan knows that if he comes at you and says, I'm going to mess you up, you'll put your guards up. But you see, Satan knows how to come and say, I ain't going to mess you up. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a witness. Mm -hmm. I came to make you better. Oh, come on here tonight. But that little teenage boy, tell that girl, I came to get under your dress. She going to get on guard. But if he starts whispering in her ears, sweet nothings. Right. Right. Talk about you pretty and all that stuff. She'll start cutting her guards down. Don't say anything, they're telling you, they're telling you, but I'm telling the truth. That, yeah, Satan knows how to be sneaky. He doesn't always come at you like he's your enemy. He'll get next to you as though he's your friend. Yeah, yeah. He'll come at you like he's trying to help you when he's really wanting to harm and hurt you. That, Satan knows how to sneak up on you like he's trying to be close to you. 
And all he's really trying to see is your vulnerable spot Amen. where he can mess you up. At. That's what happened. Yeah, the church at Pergamos was a strong church. It was a faithful church. But he says there was something. Don't miss that. He said there was some. Amen. Yeah, not all of them, just some who failed prey to the doctrine of Balaam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they caused Balaam caused them to compromise certain loyalties and principles uh -huh. because they came as though they were trying to help them when they tried to really hurt them. Y'all quiet on preaching. What is Balaam? Balaam. Balaam comes out of the Old Testament. Numbers has a lot of Balaam. Genesis got some Balaam, but Balaam was a Moabite. He was called by Balak, the Moabite king. Uh, and Balak did have, he had a problem with the Israelites and he wanted uh, Balaam to curse them. Balaam was a real prophet of God. He was a man who listened to God and did God's bidding. And Balak said, I want you to curse them. I can't curse them unless God curses them. I want you to pray to your God and make your God curse them. If your God curse them, I'm going to give you a whole lot of riches and wealth. I got some gold and silver. I got a wardrobe that's going to turn it out. I got a new car for you, a new donkey, a new horse. I'm going to really hook you up. He said, I can't do it no matter what you give me. All I can do is what he lets me do. The Bible said Balaam started praying. When he started praying, in the middle of his prayer, he switched horses and said, Lord, bless you. Yeah. They are your people. Yeah. Balak was furious. He said, man, I call you here to curse them. Not only did you not curse them, but you turned around and blessed them. Yeah. 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 Said, yeah. I, told you, I told you I can only do what he lets me do. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't curse him because he wouldn't let me curse him. Yeah. I want to stop right there. That isn't it good to know you got a God that Amen. when folk trying to curse you, that yeah. he'll turn around and bless you. dig a pit for you, and God will make that pit a blessing here. I wish I had here. He'll elevate the low places, and he'll, he'll level out the high places. That, that he knows how to make a way out of nowhere. Well, that's shouting stuff right there. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's good to know God is looking out for me when I don't have sense enough to look out for myself.
curse them, but let me tell you what, I could, I could share something with you that might help you win your goal. He said, you can't curse them, but you can put a stumbling block in their way. I can't curse them, but I can tell you how you can fix it where God will curse them. We talked about it before. Yeah. And then you are know, you around and talking about how righteous you are. Some people ain't looking at your righteousness, they're looking at your wrongness. Yeah. Some people watching you to see when you gonna mess up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever had an alcoholic? He drinks all the time, but he wants to see one Christian with a beer in their hand. Yeah. And he he better to spread it all over the time. Again, the count, but but he getting excited about that Christian of one beer because the Christian claim they don't drink. Uh, just for the record, brother Scott, I drink root beer. I drink root beer. I drink root beer. That, uh, <laughs> he says, sir, that's why you not told him my secret, man. You you talking too much, man. Don't tell me. All right, so then, so then, so then, you see, you see here that that that. He tells him that you can tempt them to mess up. Yeah. And I think I ought to tell you, and I know it's kind of repetitive, we talked about it before, but what he does, he introduces some pretty attractive, fine, foreign ladies. Yeah. And uh, look how quiet he got with Jackson. Yeah. That, that they, he said, can lead them astray. Yeah. Intertangled with those Attractive women will cause them to want to do what the women do. They uh, go to the church they go to. They worship the idol they worship. They start eating what they eat. They start saying what they say. Wow. It's like uh, the Nicolaitan doctrine is that uh, Nicolaitans will tell you that wrong is right and that right is wrong. Yeah, you, you didn't believe in that stuff, but you start hanging out with the wrong crowd. The next thing you know, you start doing stuff you didn't used to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wasn't raised that way. I know I was raised holy. I was raised Pharisee in chastity. They raised me to be a Pharisee. But when you get out there, the world don't talk Phariseeism. They, they start telling you, oh, it all that bad. No, you don't have to take all that. You don't take all that to make a Christian. You ain't got to go to church every Sunday. You can, you can miss a Sunday or two. You know, you know, you ain't got to just not go anywhere. You can go some places. Just watch yourself. What's wrong with going to the club? They got some good people at the honky talk. <laughs>
started saying Caesar is Lord. Oh, man. They really tried to fix that up. You know, ain't nothing wrong with just saying it if you don't mean it. God knows my heart. God knows what's on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No problem with you messing up. You can always ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about a sneaky serpent Satan that will sneak in your life and mess your life up. Yeah. Yeah. You ought to pull some dope addict aside and ask him, how did you get started? Mm -hmm. You know that pretty girl who now is a prostitute. Ask her, when did she start going in the wrong direction? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What would make a pretty person mess up their life? Why are so many people dumb enough to use drugs. Don't you think they got as much sense as you have? Amen. I hear church folk all the time, I don't understand why somebody would do something when they know it's not good for them. Mm -hmm. But the niggas and I bust out laughing. Because <laughs> every time I eat a pork chop, I know it ain't good for me. Yeah. Um, Oh, but it sure does taste good. See what the devil does, Brother Dickerson, he don't tell me it's not good for me. He says, it's not going to hurt you this time. One pork chop ain't going to kill you. You can enjoy that pork chop. Do you know how many people eat pork all the time? And they live a long time? Do you know how many people smoke cigarettes and they never get cancer? I looked at that poor man, he said he got lung cancer and he don't even smoke. He got it on second hand smoke. Like I'm supposed to feel sorry for him. See the problem I got with you, if you crazy enough to get second hand smoke, oh, I wish I had a witness here, you are no better than the person who smoked. Oh yeah, you got quiet, yeah. Because you see, uh, brother, brother, if, 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 if you in a room and smoke is in the room, hmm. what makes you think the smoke not going to bother you? Hmm. Oh, it got real quiet, then. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you choose to be in that room. Yeah. People come to my house, Brother Jackson, ask me, can I smoke? No. <laughs> That's why right. you got your house so special. No, my lungs are special. <laughs> I mess up, I mess up. I mess up with pork chop and we ain't gonna do the smoke. <laughs> I'm gonna choose my weapon. Now, you need to smoke, you're welcome to smoke in my garage. <laughs> you don't say garage, I say garage. If you want to smoke, you got to go. <laughs> See, see, you choose, and see, it doesn't make who, the difference who you are when you make the wrong choices. You have to pay the consequences of those choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had a witness here. Look what the devil, God told Adam, the day you eat of that fruit, you shall surely die. What was the first question that snake asked Eve? Do you really think you're going to die? Huh, Y'all huh. don't hear me. Huh. He starts trying to plant doubt in her mind. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to really die. Oh, yeah. And you see, he starts playing with the word because yeah. he's thinking physical death and he knows God is talking spiritual death. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying to make it look one way when really it's another way. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as you find out it wasn't what you thought originally, the devil has you exactly where he wants you. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to tell you, the devil is too sneaky for you. He, he's too slimy for you. He's too tricky for you. He knows how to mess you up. He knows how to build your temptation. And you need to understand, you might be able to resist my temptation, but he's not going to fix my temptation for you. Yeah. He's like a, a famous tale. All of his temptations are custom made. <laughs> He has one designed just for you. Do I have a witness here? 
Y'all been mighty good. Let me close this thing out. Well, this sneaking serpent got them messing up, and they were going in the wrong direction. And I hear the Christ say, yeah, I have something against you. Because you've been listening to the wrong doctrine. Yeah, yeah. And then he doesn't really waste a whole lot of time. In verse 12, uh, he, I'm talking, I'm sorry, verse uh, 13, he says, I know your works. He bragged on how faithful they are. Then he says, but then you, you uh, have this octopus, this martyr, this faithful man. I'm proud of you. And he jumps to 14, he says, but I got something against you. You got this doctrine of Balaam, and you got the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, and I hate them. I hate people who do what they do. And when he gets to verse 16, just like that, it's just like a quick right turn. He says, yet yeah, repent. Repent or else. Repent or else. I will come quickly and fight against you with the soul. Yeah. Well, we got quite, it's going to get worse than that. Yeah. Why would Jesus make people and then send them to hell? Hmm. Said, I'm not sending you to hell, you're sending yourself to hell. Yeah. You got a way out. I wish my life would change. If you want your life to change, you need to change. Yeah. Keep doing the wrong thing and expecting the right result. Yeah. You can't keep going to the wrong place and still want to be blessed. You can't keep doing that which is wrong and expect to receive righteous rewards. He said, no, the ball is in your court. If you want your life to change, you've got to change. Yeah, yeah. Repent. And look, he said, or else I will come. Wow. That the Christ, the risen Christ says, he will war against those who are supposed to be his with the sword, just like he would if you weren't his. Yeah. You need to repent that you want somebody to lie to you and tell you stuff that you want to hear. Or sometimes you don't need to hear what you want to hear. Sometimes you need to hear the truth.
Because the devil got them messed up. You, yeah. you, you're living in the wrong mentality. You let folk talk to you and you believe in what they say more than what God says. And you've got to learn how to believe what God says because what God tells you is the truth. Listen what, what, what Jesus says. Uh, saints must have an ear to hear. An ear to hear what? You've got to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Holy Ghost. And, and that's in every letter. He said, you got to have an ear to hear. And the problem with a lot of us, we don't have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Isn't it amazing how you hear and listen to everybody? But what the Holy Ghost is trying to tell you? Yeah. You listen to people telling you you ugly. And they are uglier than you are. But you don't want to hear God say you are beautiful. That you are wondrously, marvelously, miraculously made. That God made you with his hands. And yeah, yeah. if God made you, you got to be all right. Yeah. Why are you going to listen to the haters instead of listening to what the Lord is telling you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a wonderful life planned for you. I have rich blessings in store for you. Why can't you hear what I'm trying to tell you? Don't listen to him because he'll get you in trouble. He'll have you eating stuff you're not supposed to eat. Going places you're not supposed to go. And before you know it, you're kicked out of your paradise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I want to testify right here. And a lot of us have been kicked out of our paradises. Yeah. Yeah, all of us didn't have it hard all our life. Some of us was put into some good situations. And you lost all that. It wasn't because the devil made you do it, because you did it. You made the wrong choice. Instead of listening to God, you listened to Satan. Yeah, instead of yeah, looking for that which is good, you were looking for that which is bad. Look at this, look at this. He says, if you, yes, will listen to what I got to tell you, I got some rewards for you. I'm going to give right, you right. two things. Right. One, I'm going to give you some hidden man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the other thing is, I'm going to give you a new name. Yeah. Hidden man, hidden man, instead of looking for unhealthy food, I'm going to give you some good food. I told you they've been going to the temple worshiping idol gods. Eating food that was offered to idols. But he said instead of eating their food, I'm going to give you some heavenly food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember manna. Manna was the stuff that rained down from heaven. That's what God fed them with when they didn't have anything else to eat. Yeah, they didn't like it the whole time. They started complaining. But you know, I found out that when God feeds us, uh, sometimes it's not the most exciting food. But you're going to find out it's the best food for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and sometimes uh, the man of God feeds you uh, might not be all that appealing, but it will uh, feel uh, the cranks in your stomach. All right, all right. And get those wrinkles smoothed out. And you know what I found out? When you're eating food that God provides, uh, He gives you the right kind of energy. Right. Yeah. I love eating some sweets. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be a lot fatter, but I love sweets. Yeah. And sweets help me stay trim, brother. But, but you know what I found out uh, about eating sweets? Uh, sweets will give you energy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yes it does. I don't care what y'all say. I'm smart. I've been reading up on the internet. That it'll give you some energy. But the problem with sweets, uh, Reverend Freeman, is that the energy it provides is temporary. Yeah. 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 It gives you a quick fix. And then it fizzles out. Do I have a witness here? Greens uh, ain't that sweet. And greens don't give you no quick energy. 
but you eat some greens and some cornbread. Yeah, man, uh, I don't want to put the coach out there now. Sweat starts to pop in there. It ain't the tweakers that's gonna get you through. <laughs> when you need some real energy, you got to have some real food. <laughs> and that's the same thing in life. He said, uh, I'm gonna give you some manna. But not only am I gonna give you manna, it's gonna be hidden manna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's exciting to me because. I found out my biggest problem uh, is that we don't keep enough secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too busy believing and, and letting folk know what we have. And he said, sometimes you ought to keep some stuff to yourself. <laughs> Everything God does for you, he don't mean for you to tell everybody. I think Joseph's biggest problem is he talked too much. <laughs> He started telling his brothers and his family what God told him he's going to do for him. And you got to understand some things God gave you, he wants you to keep it to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, here, yeah. you need some hidden man. You see, when the devil knows you got the manna, he'll put extra stress on you. He, say, he'll say, send yeah. extra temptation toward you. He'll send some professional beggars your way back. <laughs> when your manna is hidden, you know you got it, and nobody else know you have it, but you and the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And when you get hungry, you can just get to the right place. Yeah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They said, pray to heaven, uh, pray to heaven, uh, feed me uh, until I want no more. Uh, somebody know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's nothing like being filled uh, with heavenly food. Uh, there's nothing like being filled uh, with food uh, the Lord prepared. Uh, yeah, y'all heard Elijah was by the brook uh, and the raven brought him a meal. Uh, he didn't say it was Sir Long Steak. He didn't say what the meal was, but the meal he brought was enough to sustain him, to make the journey that he had to go on. Do I have a witness here? Do I have anybody here been feeding on hidden man? Do I have anybody here knowing it's like to have bread from heaven? But isn't it amazing how all that simple food kept growing all of us? Isn't it amazing? Black folk were some of the strongest people in the world before y'all got lazy. The biggest people in the world, and we were eating food that wasn't even on the food charts. I came by to tell you, God can take junk and make something out of it. God can take a yes.
question is that. Why would I want a name and nobody else know that's my name? You know what I found out in life? You don't need to go around in life being all that popular. I found out everybody knowing your name is really not good for you all the time. Just because they call it your name, meaning don't mean they're making good statements about you. Sometimes they say your name. Yeah. <laughs> 
and the sound of his voice is so sweet that the bird stops singing and the melody that he gave to me in my heart is ringing. He's alright. He's alright. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. No, he's church experience we had today the spirit was moving it was just authentic praise and worship if you missed it you need to be here on Sundays and by the way on Wednesdays as well right now Pastor Haynes is speaking regarding the seven, seven churches in Revelation let me tell you this experience is something it speaks to you about he speaks, he's speaking to us right now in the seven churches in Revelation right now we're talking about Smyrna Pergamos and next week we'll be going on to the other uh, churches in Revelation but you guys you gotta get out here you gotta come and experience this word for yourself it is definitely life changing Today he talked about hidden manna. You need to go back and watch that. Hidden manna. Go back and watch last week's Bible study on hidden manna. It will definitely bless your life. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Well, before next Sunday, I will see you guys Wednesday. At Bible study, it will be held at noon and at 7 p.m. here on the Church Grounds in the Fellowship Hall. We'll see you there.